you have to ask yourself, if this person does not get better from here, will I be happy? They, there has to be a foundation. It doesn't mean we don't strive to continuously be better, but do they have a strong enough foundation that mm -hmm. I can be happy with? Because you're not guaranteed change will come, all right? And unfortunately, the potential you see, they may not see in themselves. So it's like you're trying to drag them to a place that it's not in their heart to go to. It's almost like you'll have these scenarios where, let's say a guy is a, a plumber mm -hmm. and he's making 60 grand. And the woman gets with him, but she wants a six-figure man. But she says, you know, he has potential. He could own his own plumbing business. But that joker don't want to own the business, mm -hmm. all right? Everybody's not built for that. They're not wired for that. He is happy and content making 60000 And I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. It, that's, that's his, his thing. Situation. That's his thing. Exactly. exactly. If you now try to make him be more than that, he will start to resent you. Facts. And you will resent him if he's not moving his feet fast mm -hmm. enough. So now y'all arguing about stuff because you're trying to make something happen that shouldn't, that did never existed here. There was never real potential here. It's what you want to believe. Mm -hmm. And so potential sometimes is an imaginary perception. So, oh, say that one more time. Potential sometimes is an imaginary perception. Yeah, so... How do you handle a situation when one side expects something from the other side, or are you trying to push your partner to do better or do go, mm. go for more? And uh, I think that that's the open dialogue. You have to really sit down, have open communication, mm. and see what you value, what your expectations are. But also, a lot of people now mm. these days are living in la la land where you. You're li trying to live in a movie-like setting instead of what is the reality? What is in front of you? Like, if you like or love that person, will you like them and love them for their flaws? Not even just for the good, but for their flaws. It's really that, the focus. And sometimes when you're knee-deep in love, you surpass those red flags or, or those flaws and say, hey, I can change this person. I can control them. But in reality, can we really do that? Habits are hard to break. Yeah, a lot of girls, like when they, they're with guys, they, ex they expect that and they, they, believe, they believe that they can change the guy. And so sometimes the guy doesn't want to change. And if you keep insisting on, on forcing them to change, even if they do make a little bit of change that is, that's too outside of their comfort zone, it's going to create resentment. And it's going to revert back to the, the mm -hmm. same thing. They, they go back to their mm -hmm. own status quo because sometimes too much change can alienate that person and then find out wait this isn't me who's this new person unless they really lean into it it's hard to change it change is possible mm -hmm. but the thing is it has to come within and you need to have the support of yeah. others to follow through and, and he makes a really good point which is mm -hmm. you as a girl if you're selecting the guy you gotta you gotta make an assessment mm -hmm. like is there a strong enough foundation that i will be happy with Right. So you you have to make an assessment of the guy like, you know, like, is, am I enough? It, it, well, is yeah, yeah. Is that guy's potential enough? Like, is does he have the little level of drive to my my level of satisfaction if I'm mm. selecting him? And so if he doesn't, you can't push him to, to do it. He has to want to do it himself. Mm. Or you could try and influence. But yes, at the end of the day, you cannot control. You cannot push them. And if mm. you do, you. You know, as the guy said, it creates resentment. Yeah. So it, it also, yeah, you can also assess like how well do you, can you influence this guy? Like mm. if you're the, if you're the kind of girl who can just say a little, a few words and then boom, he, he starts becoming a, a, a super plumber and then starts like expanding the whole world that well, all the more power to you. Then that's yeah. the, then now you know how much influence you have with mm. this guy. But if you try little things here and there and you get stuck. Yeah. Now you know, like, okay, this, this is the, the And the same the thing will repeat itself. Yeah. In life, there are all, all these patterns. And it takes time, too. It's mm -hmm. not jump from A to D. And that's what we think because with technology, things are so much faster. We want results faster mm -hmm. than ever. And when you don't, this is why you get that detachment mm -hmm. and the whole cutting off things and people. It's because we want the results right away. Yeah, so I mean, when it comes to partner selection, it is a tr it's tricky to be a girl to select a guy, right? So, like, mm -hmm. in terms of selecting someone that meets your needs, like you can you can pick somebody and then try to change them, or you can pick someone who's already there. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you try to pick somebody who's already there, it's going to be super competitive because every other girl is going to be picking that same guy. So mm-hmm. it is a little bit smart to be like, hmm, you know what? I'm going to pick a guy who actually has the ambition. I believe he'll get there with a little bit of influence. And mm-hmm. so there is some benefit to kind of company going away from what everybody else is looking at and saying, hey, maybe these guys can have potential. But you, but he, but the risk is you pick someone who doesn't have that ambition. So the tricky part is how do you pick somebody that has the right level of ambition to what you want? The balance and offset. It's kind of like right. the yin and yang kind of thing. You can't have, I mean, you can two alphas in the ma- in the room, but most of it will be in more in conflict than in um, resolution style. Yeah. What do you think about the idea of like, dating being equally yoked dating down this whole there's a concept of like the high the high value man everybody mm-hmm. wants the high value man the six figure earner the, you know everybody wants that but everybody is not necessarily qualified <laughs> for that like yeah. you're not a match to that and yeah. so you get frustrated because you're not getting what you want but what you want is not necessarily in alignment with who you are mm-hmm. my opinion what is your opinion on dating I don't want to say dating down, but dating a person that's in alignment with where you are currently versus where you might see yourself. Because maybe you're not where you want to be, but you want to date somebody that's already there. Yeah. So I think one, let me say, I don't I'm not a fan of dating down in that way. I, to me, it's all about connection. If there's a connection with someone who other people perceive as lower status than you or whatever, I don't care about what they Uh perceive. I don't even care if you've been brainwashed to see it that way. If there's a connection, you should embrace it. Uh If there's not, you should walk away. But I think the way people need to look at it, I'll give an analogy. There's tons of people who want to have a G-Wagon, right? And when they dream about having a G-Wagon, they're only thinking about the luxury of having it, the enjoyment of having this nice car. But what you don't realize is when you when you go to buy it, that payment is going to be serious. That maintenance is going to be serious. There's a, there's a level of stress that might come with uh-huh. this car. So you have to ask yourself, am I willing to do the things that it takes to even maintain this? All right? Now, if you get to the, the dealership and you realize this G-Wagon is, is too much for me, all right? And now you find you a nice Honda, all right, that that drives what you need to do, and you're happy in your Honda. To me, you didn't date down. You didn't downgrade in your car. You found what was best for you, you. what works for you. There's this middle ground of where I can be happy with what I'm receiving, and I'm happy with what I have to give in return. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of women, when they think about, quote, unquote, high value men, they're only thinking about what I'm going to receive. They're not considering what I'm going to have to give. A whole lot. Exactly. And it's like, yo, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't want to give all that. Mm-hmm. So let me go be with a man who's in that range that I can have that trade-off that I'm happy with. Yeah, this I love this analogy. This G-Wagon, and it, 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 this is the analogy, whether it's a G-Wagon or whether it's like the 666, uh, six-figure, six-income, and six-pack mm-hmm. abs. It's like... Um, Society generally says, yeah, go for that, that G-Wagon, go for that 666. But like, at what cost, right? And so there's high maintenance with, with, uh, with a G-Wagon. There is... Uh, there's, equivalent to drama. There's expectations when you're with someone who has uh, so many different options, mm. right? There might be a, the expectation that you're not monogamous. There might be the expectation that you have to be okay with him with lots of other girls. Mm. Are you okay with that? And so like... Uh, th- this is a very good analogy that illustrates um, that it's it's not. I mean, he that's why he says it's not dating down. People people think dating down, but it's actually it's, what's right for you. Yes, and the, dating down sounds like a very negative term. Yeah, and it's not that term that should be used. It's more of how do you connect on emotional values alignment levels um, versus, as you said, no. Everyone wants the glitzy the candy the arm candy whatever it is but they're not willing to sacrifice the consequences Mm -hmm. until they actually go through it and they realize holy shit this is not what i intended or want deep down you know what you want but you're not getting Mm -hmm. it and that's where that frustration comes into play yeah so i mean i've never owned a jew wagon i don't care to Hey, I'm going to you, um, But, but yeah. it's, you know, it's because you, you, there's certain values, like, you know, having a G-Wagon, like whether I value those things. So yeah. 
each person has to decide like what what values do you care about do you really care about the values that society tells you to value which is the 666 or do you choose to value some other things more and you know because there are consequences like you said if you yes. if you choose that 666 or the g wagon it comes with things that people don't really talk about or say yeah but as you said especially for women yeah you want those things you could get those things but they come at a price and it comes at a price where you basically sacrifice your values or your worth or put yourself in a uncompromising situation out of your own safety and comfort. Yeah, and it should the, the attitude should not be like, I can afford that price. <laughs> no, it should be like, I can afford that price, but I just choose not to, to, to deal with that because that's Correct. not what I want. And walk away from it. Yeah. You know that it's good, but you want to walk away from it because you've considered what those consequences are. So when making a decision, like a relationship shouldn't be on a whim or a gut reaction, you should really self-reflect and figure out what you really want in life.